But yeah, today's topic of discussion is timely and pertinent to yesterday's article that we released and obviously the uh, pending uh, full launch today, but the Convex helper vault. I'll uh, take it to you, man. Yeah, for people who haven't been here before, um, just kind of give a rundown on the topic at hand um, and then open up for discussion. Uh, feel free to put your questions in the chat box if you want or uh, speak up verbally. Um, all's good. And then, you know, we cover the topic and then whenever, whatever time we have left at the end, if there's anything else people want to bring up, kind of allocated an hour for this. So happy to dive into uh, anything else people want to chat about. So uh, today's uh, topic is the convex helper vaults. So these are kind of a first for Badger in that they are vaults that are not denominated in that don't have Bitcoin or a Badger asset like Dig or Badger itself um, as part of the vault. So the question is, okay, why why are we doing this? You know, when Badger first launched, we kind of used the Yearn strategies. We kind of forked those and uh, deployed them, uh, but just like the Bitcoin strategies. And they're very similar, very uh common strategies around DeFi um, for these different yield aggregators where, you know, there's some project that's emitting a token, um, most likely Curve is, is the one most used. That token is accumulated. You take the assets that are deposited in the vault, deposit them as LP into whatever the project is that's uh, emitting their token. You take their token and, and you sell it. Uh, Badger from the get-go has always been more partner focused and, you know, we use the vaults as is to start, uh, but, you know, we did some other things early on, like changing, you know, take, accumulating some of the sushi through sushi emissions and um, staking them or staking the sushi and then redistributing it to the users instead of just selling it. Um, so, you know, a lot of sushi strategies, just take the sushi, sell it for the underlying reinvest. So that's like the easiest thing to do. Um, and it's kind of nice for the user because you get, you know, native AP, native yield, but we don't see that as kind of like a sustainable long-term strategy. You know, all of this, you know, DeFi is very open. You can build a protocol to do whatever you want. You know, there's still people behind everything. There's still projects that are trying to be successful. And, you know, it's our take that they're going to be more amenable to uh, us if we are trying to be supportive of the projects that we're interacting with. You know, we don't want to just go farm, you know, whatever the newest farm is that's going to go under in a week or two. It's not really worth the time to, to do that. So we want to find more strategic partners that we can work with to um, get good yield on Bitcoin, expose the users to kind of new new protocols, things that they might find interesting. And you know, also support partners so that they can be successful for the longer term. And that, so if we're continuing to interact with them, continuing to have strategies that interact with their protocols, you know, it'd be, it's beneficial if those strategies do retain um, some value, um, if those assets retain value and us dumping them programmatically doesn't really, really do that. So that gets us to the, the convex strategy uh, where we're kind of reevaluating our curve strategies and looking at convex, it, it's kind of like an amplif amplifier where they're emitting their own token on top of you know, curve LP tokens. But then there's other things you can do with it. You can stake, you can stake the convex token and earn even more convex. You can stake you know, since they ultimately uh, deposit into Curve, they're receiving Curve emissions that are then passed on to economics holders. So we're getting all, all these tokens are kind of getting um, emitted. And, you know, what we can do is, you know, at any point, all that can just be dumped into uh, Bitcoin and then just re re reinvested into the underlying. And that's, you know, the, the easy thing to do. But, you know, we wanted to be supportive of curve, supportive of convex, and also just think long term, like the more the more convex that we're staking, the more curve that we're staking, the more yield that will be available for the Bitcoin vaults, because that gives us more sway in voting with, cur with the convex and curve to um, push distribution of rewards towards Bitcoin. So we think longer term, it's going to drive better yields for Bitcoin. And it's going to take a little while to get there, but we think it's worth kind of putting the effort in now now to do so, to build up the space with these two projects. Um, so that's that was kind of the baseline for the decision for the structure of these strategies is like, all right, let's get you know, start accumulating these assets, not just in the treasury, but then, you know, we have kind of sway of the assets that are deposited in the vaults to um, influence the governance of these two projects and hopefully drive better yield for, for Bitcoin native assets long term. So uh, 
that's kind of how we ended up with the strategy. If people have seen the, the diagram where uh, we are only selling like about 20% of the tokens um, into the underlying uh, part, you know, which is very different than the usual kind of hundred percent dump. Um, we're then taking the other 80% of those uh, and re and staking them and then restaking any rewards on top of it. So basically we're taking, you know, we're putting in, Bitcoin people, users put Bitcoin into the vaults. Um, we're taking uh, the vaults, take that Bitcoin, put it into the uh, Curve LP, uh, stake them at Convex. They earn Convex and Curve. Uh, we take the Convex and Curve um, and we restake those. And we do it through a few different ways. We can actually just stake it directly or sell it into the staked asset because the staked asset has some liquidity. Um, those staked assets also earn rewards in convex and curve, which we kind of loop back through and do the same thing. Um, and then uh, it also earns three curve, which is basically a dollar. You know, it's uh, the curve pool that has like DAI, USDC, and uh, some other stable coin from, from blanking on it right, Tether. And it sells that into, I forget if it's curve or, or convex, but largely that's kind of the flow and it kind of self perpetuates and feeds into itself. Uh, so, you know, how do we execute that? Like we, we, you know, kind of evaluated the system and said, okay, this seems to be the most efficient way to handle this thing for, for the long term. but you don't want to just build that into the vault, into the one strategy. And then also for distributing, it's kind of hard, it's kind of hard to uh, execute that. So what we did then is say, okay, well let's, and how do we distribute it? Cause then, you know, users can end up getting all these different assets. So, we ended up saying, well, what's the most efficient way to handle this kind of loop through of where you have the convex and the curve that you also earning rewards. So we actually created a vault for that. And that's where kind of the, the helper vaults came up. And we could have just used that as a way to have, you know, put the rewards into those vaults. And then what it does is it makes it very much easier for us to then distribute those uh, rewards where we're distributing a vault token to users. And then you're not missing out on any opportunity cost of not claiming your convex and claiming your curve and then staking it, we're giving you an asset that represents basically this whole strategy where in the background, it's claiming and restaking uh, the curve and convex. So, you know, we're distributing the convex vault and the, the curve vault um, tokens, and you can claim that, but, you know, while it's sitting there unclaimed, it's still performing this, you know, re reinvestment strategy. And, you know, once we did that, I was like, all right, well, this is, seems like a, a helpful strategy for for folks. Other people might find it interesting. You know, there's no real reason to not open it up for deposit. Um, so that's why uh, we've opened it up uh, for people to, uh, anyone with convex or curve to actually deposit into those vaults. Um, and we put pretty low fees on it. I forget where, exactly where we landed, but it's, it's lower fees than our regular vaults, you know, because we're competing against, uh, you know, the option, other option is to just stake directly in convex and just kind of do it yourself. Um, but, you know, the, the strategy definitely provides some value taking care of all those actions and kind of doing the reinvestment, um, you know, and saves you on gas and just having put effort into doing it. Um, but as we do that, we're able to accumulate more and more uh, convex and curve through uh, through the fees, uh, through performance fees, which helps Badger long-term, like I said, you, you kind of build that influence. So that's the, that is the kind of the, the flow. I'll go start kind of going through the questions. Yeah, anyone have any questions or, or things they want me to hit on? Um, otherwise I'll kind of start going through the, the chats. Nope, all right, um, yeah, so I'll start going through. Feel free to speak up or, or toss any questions on the sidebar. Um, you know, Prince asked, in the, in the CVX strategy, we're selling the CVX curve for more CVX. And uh, so the reason that we're doing that is because, you know, every vault still has like a base asset. So for CVX, we need to get it back into CVX. But on for the flip side, on the CVX curve, where it's curve staked in CVX, we're selling the CVX for curve. So they kind of net net each other out a bit because the, the issue would be, you know, if, if one vault is, so if a vault is, is earning, is getting a reward in some asset, we basically need to sell and reinvest or emit it directly to the vault holder, vault token holder. And those, those are, those are really the only options. So in the sense of the CVX strategy, we're earning CVX curve, which is curve staked in CVX. We would need to 
either emit that directly to the user, um, but we thought it was more impactful to just reinvest it, especially given that on the flip side, we have the Curval that's selling CVX for the state CVX for CVX curve. So it's kind of like they kind of offset a little bit. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, exactly, Prince. So it's like, yeah, if you want to keep a, a you, if you want to keep a balanced value in both, like I, I don't know what the the returns are off the top of my head for both of them and how exactly it'll play out. But um, yeah, you can kind of see how they work and then balance that your yourself. And yeah, it's it's basically for you know, we didn't want to have we're already emitting a fair number of assets to depositors into these. Uh, vaults. So we just didn't want to have it be even more, you know, more and more, more assets. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, this is, you know, the first, the first helper vaults that, that we are doing, and I don't think they will be the last, you know, we're constantly talking to new protocols and projects that we might work with. Um, and we're, you know, I think we're really going to lean into this whole partnership kind of angle to hopefully be a bit of a dif differentiator. So I don't know that, also happy to if people have input or questions or thoughts on kind of going this more partnership route versus just farm and dump, you know, happy to talk about that too. Yeah, Prince, you asked about um, we're accumulating the weekly EPS airdrops. Yeah, so yeah, this EPS token is being airdropped to the Convex users. Um, I believe, uh, I think we're looking at just doing a straight distribution. Would be interested to hear your, your, um, your opinion on it. I know it's something that's it's been coming up somewhat frequently. I think after we get this, um, you know, we're removing the, all the guards to the vaults today. Um, and then I think we'll kind of figure this out. Um, so for the EPS, I think we're looking at just distributing it to users, um, kind of like how we did that sushi um, distribution. And maybe we just do it like quarterly or something or, or monthly. I don't, I don't know exactly how we would handle it. Um, you know, I think there's also a larger question of what we do with non-productive assets in the treasury. Um, and uh, yeah, so for myself, moving from convex to badger. So were, were you claim, were you staking the EPS? Is um, the EPS, can, is it uh, a productive asset that you can stake? Okay. And that earns you VE EPS or something. Is that useful? Okay, got it. Um, yeah, I think yeah, that, that's the other thing with like being on another chain. I think we're probably just going to distribute it to folks and let people do whatever they whatever the heck they want. That I don't even know if there's like ample liquidity on Ethereum to to do stuff with it. So I think for this one at least, we'll we'll just kind of you know uh, distribute it. I I, I kind of see a couple of different categories of ass you know, reward assets. And, you know, uh, ETH is more, I'll kind of roll this into your question as well. So, you know, as we're evaluating a strategy, there's kind of a couple, there's two different destinations for rewards. One is users and then the other is the treasury. And then the question becomes, what do we do with these rewards in each of those instances? Um, you know, the treasury gets it through the, the, the fees. Uh, so in the sense, in the curve example, um, you know, the 30% or, well, actually, I think they're lower now. Um, but for the portion, the, see the 20 or 30% performance fees that are in place now, I think the governance for updating the fees didn't pass at the moment. So of the funds that are going to the treasury, 10% um, of the total, I believe, we're selling into Bitcoin to accumulate Bitcoin in the treasury and the rest is we're accumulating in the native token. So um, curve and convex. So yeah, ETH is more, we are trying to accumulate CVX in the treasury. Um, right now we're just doing it through the fees. Um, it's, I think it's something where we'd be open to finding other mechanisms to do so to kind of ramp that up. So I think we'd like to have more uh, sway in that ecosystem long-term. But yeah, we are, and you know, that's like on the way in kind of how we handle the assets. And then, you know, the assets themselves, I see them as kind of in two categories. Um, well, I mean, I guess three categories. One is any rewards in the native asset, which you don't usually get, but as you're getting like governance tokens or things like that, I think we evaluate them as either being productive or non-productive. Um, where productive is like, all right, this is, would be a good, a good thing to accumulate, whether it's we can earn more with it or it's 
us holding it like convex can help lead to better yield for uh, our vaults long term, or it's like a strategic partner. Like it's also something that I can see as being a, a productive asset. But then we have this other, you know, other stuff that is not productive, like three curve, like, you know, perfect example or e e EPS where it's like, okay, maybe that could be productive, but we're just not, you know, we're not there yet. Um, we have maybe, you know, maybe we need to talk to that team and see what the deal is there. But let's just use it as, as the example. It's what do we do with that? I, I don't think we weren't necessarily going to go and default to just like, let's dump it all if we're not, if we haven't been talking to the team or whatever. I think it's closer to being able to do that. But then, um, you know, it's, it's definitely something we're in discussions about for how we want to do this. Because we still want to be viewed as like a good place to partner with. Um, but also we don't want to end up with, you know, 90 different assets in the treasury that aren't really doing anything. Um, and similar for distributing to users, you know, we don't want to distribute five different tokens to users on one strategy because you're going to end up getting like 20 bucks of each and then you have to pay gas to claim and sell or do whatever you want with them. So we're kind of breaking it down to like, yeah, productive. If it's productive, we'll do everything we can to maybe we use a helper vault or something like that to make it easy to distribute and, and make it kind of continue to earn. And then if it's uh, non-productive, we'll, uh, you know, figure something out, whether we just distribute it directly and say, okay, hands off, you know, users figure it out. Um, or that's where we would, you know, s just sell it for the underlying. Um, so I think, you know, we'll, we're working on kind of figuring out more of a model of that. Um, like Prince you said on, on the topic of the treasury continuing to grow and bring on productive assets, can you talk about the utility of Badger going forward with a fee sharing revenue model? I understand the current thing is to make the trade of bag Badger tradable for Bitcoin, why not a percentage of fees similar to the Convex platform that the team clearly does? Yeah, so yeah, I mean, the, the token mechanics is something that we are working on a lot right now and we'll probably open up a Discord channel on imminently. Um, I think what you were referring to there is the discussion around a redemption pool. So Badger's accumulating all the stuff in the treasury, right? We've got Bitcoin in the treasury, we've got you know, curve convex, you've got some LP tokens, all this stuff. You know, there's not currently a direct tie back to the the Badger token. The angle with the redemption pool, meaning that we build up a balance of Bitcoin um, in a pool um, that is redeemable by Badger or B Badger. Uh, and, and the angle that I'm looking at now is actually it would be B Badger, where you could go redeem it for a portion of this, a, a proportional amount of this pool. Um, and that B badger would actually be burned. The, the badger backing it wouldn't be burned. So like all people that did not redeem their bad, uh, B badger at that point would have a higher um, ratio, uh, more badger per B badger um, after some forms of redemption. So that's, and you know, continuing to push funds into that redemption pool is, a, is, is kind of a fee share, right? In that, if it's a hard guarantee, that's building kind of like a baseline component of the value of the token. Uh, the benefit there is that it's keeping the assets in the Badger ecosystem. And ideally people can look at that long-term and say, okay, there's this amount of revenue coming in annually. This percentage of the revenue is going to the um, redemption pool. And then uh, that, is increasing the redemption pool at this rate. Um, if I have this amount of Badger now, I and I am estimating this amount of growth over the next X years, I can project that it should be worth Y Bitcoin in X years. And I can do that math for how much I think, you know, discounted cash flow, whatever. Um, how much you think Badger's baseline redemption value is now, and then layer the other components on top. Um, yeah, I mean, we're, we're, we're open to anything, um, you know, and a, you know, I think there will be a uh, lockup component, whether we go the VE route with like VE Badger, so it'd be like the curve and VE um, convex, how they do it, um, or having something more that's a, uh, like a cool down period, like staking for Ave, because, you know, we're not, we're not an exchange, um, and, you know, so our, our, the structure of everything is a bit different. So I don't know if just like emitting a good chunk of the revenue 
to stakers is that impactful versus accumulating assets in the treasury that the um, tokens kind of have control and redemption value for. Um, but it's, you know, it's, do we, would people rather, you know, if we're going to say, let's look at 50% of the revenue coming in, you know, week over week, is it more impactful to distribute that to people that are staking and staking using something like a V curve model? Um, and that just happens in perpetuity, or is it more impactful to uh, accumulate assets in a redemption pool uh, that will continue to grow long term um, that the assets have claim on? Yeah, uh, ETH is more. Um, yeah, did, did I say that B Badger will be burned after redemption? Uh, yes. So that doesn't mean that the Badger is getting burned, though. It just means that there's uh, less B Badger per Badger in the pool at that point. So if one person to, were to redeem, then um, the Badger, B Badger rate relative to Badger for everyone else um, improves at that point. Um, and this is all still very open for discussion and there'll be governance before any of it's actually pushed through. The, the issue with doing a direct Badger redemption is that, okay, what do you do with that badger? Um, I don't think anyone wants to really burn it because um, you know, we're kind of rocking the, the 21 million meme. Uh, so in, so the only options are to like redistribute it into the ecosystem over, over time or something like that. Uh, but that doesn't, that kind of continues to dilute the redemption pool. Um, so yeah, I think going B badger is the, is the right angle if we were to go that that route, um, and you know, B Badger might become VE Badger or something like that. So it's it's definitely something that's top of mind right now. Um, and figuring that out. Um, yeah, Prince, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm with you. Like the, the the cash flow to stakers is definitely interesting. And what um, if we go the redemption pool route? I think we would still. You know, what we're looking at is also just doing you know, tying emissions to revenue um, where we don't have to necessarily do buybacks to do that. So what we, what we can do is say, okay, well, how much dollar value of revenue did we make this week? Um, and then we can say, okay, we can start at some multiplier. Let's say it's two X right now because we're still in bootstrapping mode we can emit 2x that value in, in Badger for the next week or for that week or, or, or whatever, or we can use some rolling average or something like that. Um, and then we can slowly walk that back to where eventually you're, you're you know, it's 0.5x or something like that, where you're actually starting to really accumulate revenue. Um, and then I think we would, you know, buybacks would be more of an ad hoc thing versus like buy and emit, which I think, it, you know, doesn't always have the best consequences. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, it's all um, good discussion points and stuff that we've talked a good bit about internally. And I want to start kind of discussing externally as well, because it matters. Um, you know, and it, you know, we have all these non, you have all these assets just kind of like sitting there in the treasury now, like millions of dollars of stuff that, you know, I think we, we just need more intention for. It's like, what is this, what is this doing? How is it helping the project? How is it helping um, Badger holders, Badger app users, um, versus just kind of like sitting there, um, you know, and not really having a, a plan. So um, definitely, like I think the revenue-based emissions is something that isn't probably too far away. And then I think, you know, hopefully, I think you know, we'll probably light up, if not by the end of this week, early next week, you know, a channel in the Discord to talk more directly about some of the other token stuff, like the redemption pool. Um, and then, you know, I think playing into all of that is uh, adding a security module component, um, you know, because if we're going to be, I'm at least of the mind that um, if a protocol is going to be paying stakers, like staking should be bringing something to the protocol beyond just locking up tokens. So um, that would be something like uh, a more explicit claim on staked value by uh, 
anyone experiencing a loss participating in the protocol versus I think there's probably even you know, more of an implicit claim on it right now, given that, okay, if there was some hack, I think people would look at the treasury, look at the token and say, all right, how would we make people whole from that hack? And, you know, while that's all fine and well, I think it would be beneficial to have that be more explicit and have an actual process around it versus just being, being out there. Um, but yeah, yeah, Prince, good question. Seems like you've thought about this a good bit. So you'd love to chat more. Um, keep an eye out on the discord from we, uh, Light that bad boy up. Cool. Yeah. And anyone, um, let's see other helper vault topics. Um, any other protocols people like out there that we should be looking to do like helper vaults for or um, participate with? Oh, Prince. Nice. Yeah. A lot of stuff coming on boost too. Uh, and getting up to a high boost now is, uh, is smart because uh, Pose got something in the hopper that we're is going through review right now. BIP that'll make you want to be up, up at the top for sure. Um, yeah. So, I mean, uh, I, I guess, you know, we're, we have a couple other, you know, these convex vaults are our big, big ones. I think the next focus for vaults is going to be in, on Polygon. Um, so we're working with looking at the projects there and seeing how we will structure our, our vaults to be both hopefully uh, um, profitable, but also not too extractive. And, you know, that'll be kind of where we'll, we'll go next. And, you know, maybe there'll be some helper, vault, helper vaults or other things that, that pop up there. Uh, you know, there's Curve and Sushi and QuickSwap uh, rewards kind of being distributed on Polygon. So excited to go get those launched. I think those are kind of the next main things. Um, otherwise, we do have a few other projects that are in early stages or haven't even launched yet that we're talking about that, you know, hopefully we'll have good yield opportunities and um, provide some, you know, staking and restaking opportunities. So um, plenty of new protocols and assets to get exposure to just by uh, hanging out and using Badger. All right. Uh, yeah. Anything else people want to chat about? we got 16 minutes left. So otherwise I can uh, give people their time back. Anything at all. All good. Um, all right. Uh, Premium, you want to address governance? Uh, sure. Like what, what about it? <laughs> or what, what any, anything you want to specifically want to chat or, or discuss the council and core. Uh, yeah, I like, I, I can. Um, yeah, that I would say, I mean, I'm, I think you've already been in the, the, the chats. Um, Tritium's running with a lot of that. Um, I can give you my my take on it, and you know, he's got his kind of doc, which I think I generally agree with. But you know, it's you know the tricky component, obviously, is balancing the you know people, and I think everyone wants the team, but they, they want the protocol to move fast, and they want to be able to execute and get stuff deployed um, and have access to it. Um, quickly and you know take advantage of good opportunities, but it's hard to do that with going through full governance on every decision for like getting you know determining the amount of rewards and um, how to set the fees and how to set the structure of the the vault. It's a little tricky. So I think what we're you know we've always strived I think to try to make things more systematic so that we can get one big vote on a system and then we don't really need that many votes beforehand. But I think the angle is to empower the council more so that we can get a uh, fast decisions on things where it's like, oh crap, I guess this is something we should actually get sign off on. Let's get the council to weigh in on it real quick and move forward. Um, or things that, okay, this seems like a somewhat important decision. You know, the team, it should be more than just the team making, but it maybe doesn't seem like something that's worthwhile doing a whole bit. Cause like, oh, a BIP and a snapshot vote are is like a four to five day process. And you know, we would like to provide good uh, data and it's hard to necessarily have like good back and forth in the forum. Um, so we don't want to like get rid of BIPs, obviously. But I think we just want to be smarter about when we're in, in, you know, people get vote fatigue. Yeah. So how is the power control and vision to be coordinated between core council and the community? Yeah. So ideally, Core is representative of the community in that they're kind of controlled, uh, not, not controlled, but like who's in core is voted on by the community. I mean, so who's in uh, the council is voted on by the community. 
And so how do we, you know, I, I think we need to kind of break down, you know, the decisions into kind of different categories and how we are going to ad address them. Cause it's kind of, you know, it's just being in the middle of it for a while now, it definitely gets, you know, a bit burdensome to go through like a full bit process for like everything. And, you know, one, so I'll, I'll roll it back a bit. Um, the other thing that's missing here is like feedback loops. Um, and we don't want to be just like putting stuff out and saying, hey, this is what we're doing, take it or leave it. Um, yeah. So, but yeah, you know, to that point, I think um, I'm hoping the bit process is almost shorter with that, where hopefully we're instead of having more discussion in the builder group, just, just the builder group or in the, the team group, we take the discussions to the community first and sorting out a lot of the stuff there in these just more open discord channels. Um, and, you know, part of this is like, we've got a few more bodies now, so it's a little easier to do. Um, so I think we can sort out a lot of stuff there. So if like my, if you look at the um, discord channel for, what is it? The NFT power up, you know, we couldn't settle on what's like the good ranges for people to vote on. So let's go talk about the community. So I actually need to follow up in that group and like, like, like help get those, get the people that have been participating to help me kind of make a decision on how we want to structure the BIP. Because the other thing is like, if you want to choose a parameter, or like a, a value for a parameter, it's very hard to structure in a BIP in a way that is like, makes sense and is worthwhile doing. Like you have to do ranges and maybe do rank choice voting or something, then that doesn't always work out right. So we're hoping in like the pre-BIP Discord channels to sort a lot of that stuff out and make the BIP. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping the BIPs are more like, hey, here's some data to support what we've been discussing. And then here's kind of the parameters of the discussion that we discuss, um, parameters of the question that we discuss, and like let's go to the, like the real vote. Um, I think for the the council, like we just wanted to kind of be a check on the core team, right? It's like stuff where okay, it's probably reasonable things for the core team to make decisions on, um, but let's run it through the council to get some you know community rubber stamp, and we're trying to have that be open discussions as well by kind of moving that to the public discord as well. So yeah, I, mean, I think it's, you know, I don't know exactly where the lines are going to break down. Um, there's the governance channel and the uh, public discord where I think a lot of this discussion has been happening as well. Um, but, you know, the I think the core team is going to kind of drive a lot of, okay, these are the things that we're focusing and putting our time into building. And then the overall community is going to be in control of, you know, any, large money decisions um who's on the council yeah so yeah we're so the court core team's kind of like driving hey these are the direction of things that we're going where we're putting our time and effort into building the council helps with some of the tweaking of parameters and things like that around launch you know i think a lot of that the, the council stuff is focused on launch and then the community because that's more timely stuff and then the overall community and the the bips and snapshot votes are around you know using chunks of the treasury for anything emissions um and plans yeah so yeah prince said yeah there's been a lot of discord talk on the fee discussion any resolution yeah paul i'm not sure if we i think we're keeping things under uh, just like the standard fee structure for now with like the 20 percent of the 0.5 percent 20 percent uh, performance 0.5 percent withdraw if that's right i might not have that exactly right um yeah yeah i guess we had yeah so old old fees are in place get it let's get a discord going on the new new fee structure we had like an ibbtc fee discord channel but i think ibbtc fees are fine so maybe we archive that i mean i, I know there's a lot of discussion i think some decisions around that so maybe we scrap that and light one up for general fees and uh, for you know, Prince, yeah, I, I, I agree. Like the tokenomics is top of mind. And, you know, part of the reason I don't have any, all the answers to some of these things is I'm trying to kind of peel back out of some of this, some of the vault product stuff and really put the heat on the, the token stuff. And, you know, there's been a lot of discussion, you know, things have been happening in the background. We actually went and, um, you know, I put together kind of initial proposal, pretty much the things that I've been discussing here and we ran it by our the strategic investors first just for feedback and that's you know a lot of what like the vcs and investors in the space do is like you know the way in on token models and stuff and obviously they represent big you know whale money too so you want to make sure that they find it appealing so overall pretty good feedback on that but you know there's other components that kind of tie in with it like um 
you know, post baby treasury controlled liquidity. And, uh, you know, some of that plays into how all of this works as well, or at least how it's presented. So yeah, I, I definitely want to get, like I said, well, I think we'll probably get the pre bit discord channel going um, on tokenomics and start getting a lot of feedback there. And then hopefully get something settled for a BIP in the next you know, week or two for at least phase one of what we're doing. Um, because it's, you know, a lot of it's like marketing and presentation as well, or, you know, the redemption pool and, you know, rev share revenue distribution aren't like that different from one another, but they manifest differently. Um, I think the redemption pool is a, it's a stronger long-term thing where people can come and it's like, where do you value? Do you value people perceiving that this asset will have more value long-term because of this revenue uh, accruing to it? Or will it, you know, will it uh, derive more value because people are locking the specific token up um, in a contract that gives them access to a flow of revenue? So like what, you know, it's, it's, two sides of the same coin. I, I'm kind of leaning more the redemption pool way because one, you know, if you look at like V curve and stuff, like, yeah, sure, people have to lock up curve to get VE curve, but now VE curve is like just as liquid as curve and they kind of operate the same. So I don't know what value there is necessarily from the lockup because like VE curve basically is curve. It's just, it's like, it's almost like operating a burn of sorts. So it's like, you know, burning a portion of it, but not all of it. Um, so yeah, I don't, I, 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 I don't really like that. That's something I haven't fully wrapped my head around, but you know, it'd be good to have discussions with folks that have been thinking about it as well and see, you know, see, see where we are. It's, it's definitely just like a hairy topic. <laughs> so I'll keep an eye out for you in there. Um, but yeah, maybe we'll, maybe we'll light it up, uh, tomorrow or Monday and just get that, get that going. Cause, uh, I've got my Google docs that I've been banging my head against for a while. So it could be good to get other people. Yeah, well, I guess, yeah, Prince, it's you know, the breakdown you're saying with the redemption pool, you know, you have to redeem it to necessarily get the value from it, where if there's cash flow, then you don't, you know, have that just coming in and, and live off of it, as you said. I guess the flip side would be if that value is accruing to the asset, the asset should increase in price and you can, it's like Bitcoin, right? Like there's no cash flow in Bitcoin, but people hold Bitcoin because they think it's going to continue to go up in price. And then you can eventually live off of just having to sell very small fractions of it or using it as collateral. So I think that's definitely, you know, using it as collateral to then borrow against and then pay that back. So, you know, making it productive is another thing that obviously we're, we're pretty focused on whoever that staked asset is. So yeah, it's, um, I don't know, it's, it's tricky. I mean, the, the, the goal is make number go up, right? <laughs> So whether that's, oh, everyone's going to run and try to get it so they can get access to the cash flows or they're going to run and get it because they know that um, if Badger continues making, you know, 50 million in revenue annually for the next 10 years, you know, not even counting compounding, that's $500 million in the redemption pool. Um, you know, Badger is currently trading at two exits redemption pool price um, and its redemption pool price at... Five hundred million dollars would be, you know, twenty bucks. So the fair value of Badger is forty bucks minus some. Um, at that point, it will, it will be forty bucks minus some. You know, however you want to discount the time. So it's, you know, there's different ways and you know, different types of investors. So it's definitely something that, uh, you know, we need we need to discuss. So yeah, yeah, we definitely need to accumulate CVX, and you know, I've. Also been thinking of other ways we can accumulate stuff. Like you can always, you know, if we could use assets in the treasury to deposit into Alchemix to take out a self paying off loan. And then, um, you know, we like to take the USDC, some of the, the UCC in the treasury and use that to buy productive assets, whether it's CBX or even just like buying Bitcoin to hold the treasury. So, you know, also interested to hear what people think about that. Um, start building that up and, you know, being, I think we, the main thing is we need, just need to be, have like more, you know, more thoughtful uh, management of the treasury, which we're getting to. Like we took a long time. Um, we've got Mason and uh, we've got someone new coming who's uh, joined, who's doing a lot of the high level operations and finance, uh, financial stuff. So that's definitely something that's coming down the pipe. Cool. Well, we're at time. So yeah, thanks everyone for popping on. I hope you found it helpful. Uh, keep an eye out. We'll be doing these, you know, at least, uh, 
every two weeks with me and starting to kind of uh, maybe push the people on the team to fill in the middle weeks. If people would like that, feel free to uh, bug other people on the team and say you want this every Thursday and we'll uh, guilt people into uh, running them as well. And, you know, I can always do it a little more here and there, but, um, you know, I think it's a, I don't know, it's a, it's a format I like, so appreciate it. So uh, thanks again for the questions in the chat. And if not before, I'll uh, talk to you all in uh, two weeks.